Hi, welcome back to another uh, Gibbs adventure. Jim here, and I got Casey with me out here again today. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> so, I have a set here that uh, it's a set for Fisher, combination Martin Fisher set. And uh, I caught a Martin in it, and the Fisher came and ate my Martin. And ever since then, the Fisher won't go in my set. So, I tried something different here. I, I put a box on the ground beside my set so come on and we'll see if we caught him here okay so he hasn't come back yet there's no tracks of him being here yet so he'll be due here any day but uh i caught a, a nice martin in this set here up here top and uh within two days the fisher came and ate half of them so i said i'll put a set on the ground to see if he comes back because he's been back to my set twice milling around so i'm just going to freshen up the lure and uh it's a little bit of a concoction that I make myself. It's got a, disgusting. <laughs> got a little bit of skunk essence in it. But, uh... It's got a lot of skunk essence in it. What? Come on. There we go. So, hopefully, he'll be here the next time I come. It's uh, getting close to, it's getting very close to the end of the season. In Ontario here, we're regulated by trapping seasons and quotas and different ways of managing the fur bears. The season closes for uh, land fur, what we call land fur, Fisher, Martin and whatnot, for the end of February. So I think it's like February 21st today and the season will close in seven days. And I'm gonna, we're gonna get a warm up. So I'm just gonna go around today and, uh, whew, that smells good today. We're gonna get a uh, warm up, so I'm gonna go around and bait, rebait, relure my sets to make sure there's good bait in them and, and good lure. And then uh, probably Thursday, I'm gonna come out and pick everything up, and that'll be it for my land for for the season. I'll, I can still uh, go after wolves until the end of uh, March. March 31st is the closing of our wolf season here, so I'll probably just run the, the two wolf dumps, wolf dumps that I got going until the, till then. No, they set it off. There's a weasel track, let's see. Where? Oh yeah. Ate some of your bait, but not all of it. Oh yeah. Huh, look at that, he didn't even set off the trap, eh? Those weasels are skilled. Oh, get ready. A lot of times, some or a lot of times, sometimes your traps are set off, and there's nothing in them. This time, uh, for whatever reason, the trap slid right out. When I make this set nowadays, I always take a chain, my chainsaw and cut a flat spot so that I don't run into this problem as much. But when it's vertical, like that, a little bit, it's, it's, it tends to sometimes roll out. We did catch a nice martin in this one a month ago, eh? Okay? Yeah. Anyway, not today. The reason I'm putting the brows all the time, the bows all the time in front of the, my set is to, to try to stop... Uh, Accidental not... catchers. If you haven't watched any of our other videos, you'll hear him say that in almost every video. Uh -huh. But for any of you new people, he's just telling you again. <laughs> Thanks, Case. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a little repetitious, eh? There's only so many ways to do this. What's like your most common accidental catch then? Uh, squirrels. And red squirrels are, are valuable in the sense that you might get a buck for them. But flying squirrels have no value. So they just clog up your traps. And, and, and I find that no matter what, there's always a certain amount of your traps that are fired off for, for whatever reason. And uh, when you're not making good catches, like the last two weeks I haven't caught very much, you have a tendency to just check from the machine and drive by. But, uh, you know, the, the last box, we didn't take a picture of, but the last box, twice I've had uh, squirrels in it, and you can't tell. So if you look from the from the from the skidoo, you think the box is still set, but it's not. So you have to physically get off your 
machine and go in and look at it because as soon as you start checking from the trail or checking from the road your catch even goes uh, downhill further what's going to happen here in two days is going to go to like plus two celsius so above zero it's, it's not going to be froze and the bait's going to smell my lure's really going to smell and whatever that's my last little hurrah for the season i'm going to wait until la the day after it cools down again and then I'm going to come around and pick up all my traps and I'm expecting to catch three or four or five or six more Martin when that happens. I probably still have about uh, 30 Martin sets out in different locations, Martin combination Martin Fisher sets. So that's what I'm hoping for, for to close out my season. Stopped at another set here and uh, <laughs> I'm not having any luck today. The, uh, the Martin came and he uh, somehow Knocked my trap out of the set and got my bait. So, so that's a little discouraging, but it is what it is. Trap's not even set off, so he's figured out how to slide it out. So I'll have to rebait, relure. And like I said, hopefully with this next little mild spell that we're gonna get here, we'll pick him up. But that's trapping. But he came in there, got to my bait and left right there, took off. So there you go. Another miss, I suck today. So this is my third miss of the day already. I had actually a lot of squirrel tracks here, but that uh, that's a Fisher track that came in. And there's also been a Martin track. You can see the Martin track right there. So. I, I suck today, Case. We still have some sets left. Yeah, a few left. Okay, onward and upward, eh? Not too much. ago they got really knocked down by the the deer got really knocked down by that deep, deep snow you know yeah so yeah they ever it was uh i just see them on the road right there the whole bunch of goats here okay there's six of them here eh? oh yeah yeah well there you go sir that was for you well thank you I have to change my sliders on my slate. It's a Pelican 70, and uh, I blew the slider on one side and the other one's war. The center ones are pretty good, but the, the two outside ones are war, and you can see up front there, it's wearing a black hole in my, uh, in my uh, slate, so I have to change them. So I ordered them off Amazon, and uh, didn't even have to leave the house. Ordered the whole kit. It comes complete with the, with the instructions and all the, the hardware. Uh, it's a it's actually a better kit than what's on the sleigh already. The uh, the parts, especially for holding the uh, the runner on the front, is, are more heavy duty. So I'm much uh, happier with that. As you can see, I blew the runner right off. And uh, you can see the wear that's starting to happen here. So I have to get a new runner. I had to park this until I until I got the kit. It took about 10 days on Amazon to come in. So the first thing you have to do is drill a hole, quarter inch hole in front so you can hook it up to the front of your sleigh here. And uh, they come now complete with a uh, an insert and a sleeve.
and you can bolt it in here. One of the tricks I learned online was to use a heat gun to warm it up enough so that it's a lot more flexible. Otherwise, there's a lot of resistance in it. So, I'm not really trying to overheat this, but I'm just trying to heat it up enough so that it bends back down into place a lot easier. Sometimes a little bit of heat makes a heck of a difference, you know? If you notice the wear on the uh, sliders, they, they seem to wear the most right up in front here. So. So you can see it's on pretty good here now. It's uh, quite a bit heavier uh, setup than what it was before, so I'm quite happy with that. <coughs> the, uh, I'm probably only going to change the two outside ones. Those are the ones that are wore. And uh, the inside ones, until they get down on the red, on the runner, which I'll show you here. On the sleigh, the two outside runners take all the wear. The center ones don't take as much wear, so I don't have to change them right away. I change the one, I'll change the other one, and that'll be good enough, and I'll be back in the game with it. I had it down for like uh, two weeks, waiting for the parts. It's bigger than my other Pelican. My other one's a Pelican 60. I use it as a spare, but I like this one when I'm beaver trapping and whatnot. It, I can put my uh, metal frames in it, and I carry a much bigger load, and beavers are quite a bit heavier than and just carrying bait around and whatnot. So this is, I really need to slay back in action here for me. So I'll uh, show you the finished product, product, but you can see by using a heat gun, it makes a big difference, makes it a little easier for you. And uh, it gets the job done a lot easier. So there you go. Okay, so I changed two of the four runners. Uh, the two aren't even close down to the wear bar yet. So they're the center ones. They don't wear as much as the outside ones. But I did reinforce them because they're a couple of more loose here a little bit. So I put some new screws in and tighten them up. I ordered the kit off Amazon. It's a Pelican sleigh. Uh, like I said, it took about 10 days for delivery. Didn't have to leave the house. That was the neat part about it, especially with all the stuff that's going on right now. Is Just click a few clicks and uh, somebody shows up at your door. They actually delivered it on a Friday night at 8 o'clock in the evening. So I thought that was pretty cool. So if you can buy local, it's great. But if you don't... Take advantage of Amazon. Um, I'll keep an eye on these runners. If the uh, two center ones need to be changed, I'll change them out really fast. But like I said, the, the, it's the key to get these changed really easy is the heat gun. Put the heat on the runners, get that bend in it, and you can screw it in. It only takes a couple minutes. Like I said, I did it outside. I don't have a heated shop, so I did it outside. It was a perfect day, so hopefully this will help you.